Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. My name is Leanne and welcome back to another what's for dinner video. I love sharing different recipes with you. And as I was putting this together, I realized these are all ground beef recipes. Now, we don't eat just ground beef, but we do eat a lot of beef because we purchased a half of a cow last year and we're still working our way through it. And I don't always film all of the meals for a video in one week, but this was still definitely in a short period of time and I was like, wow, we've eaten a lot of ground beef. But we're gonna make this a ground beef themed what's for dinner, but you can of course substitute with ground turkey and probably ground chicken. I don't really have a lot of ground chicken, but uh, I don't know if I've ever cooked with ground chicken. But anyways, you could definitely substitute with ground turkey and whatever you wanna do for your preferences, but I'm gonna share with you lots of different ways to use ground beef in your recipes. So let's get started. This first recipe is for a shepherd's pie, which yes, I realize technically it is a cottage pie because it uses, uses ground beef, but a lot of people know it more commonly as shepherd's pie. So I'm starting by just icing up some potatoes and we are gonna put those on the stove to boil. I will have a recipe linked below that I followed. It is a smaller one. It says it's dinner for two. We did have some leftovers, but not a ton, but you can of course double it. So I'm just salting my water. We're gonna get those, um, that water boiling and those potatoes cooked. So in a pan, I have my ground beef. I do oil my pan because our ground beef is extremely lean. This recipe only calls for a half a pound of ground beef, but I am gonna just cook up the whole pound and we'll use the other half for another night's dinner. So once that was um, all done, you're, if there's a grease, you're going to drain the grease and remove from pan. And then I am just putting up some diced onion and carrot. The recipe calls for about a half a medium onion and one medium carrot diced up. And we're going to just saute those till they are nice and tender. We're gonna add in about one clove of garlic as well as some dried thyme. Stir that around for just a few seconds. You don't wanna burn the garlic. And then we're gonna add in one tablespoon of flour. And then it calls for two teaspoons of ketchup or tomato paste. I had some tomato paste that was in the freezer. I've been trying to clean out my freezer. That was like leftover from another time. I'd opened a can, not use it all, froze it. So that's what that was. That's why it was kind of coming out all weird out of a bag. And once you've got the flour nice and cooked and incorporated, you're gonna add in three quarters cup of chicken broth. And I'm just kind of scraping up the bits off of the bottom of the pan so that you get all of that good flavors. You can do that once the liquid's in there. And then I added in a half a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. I'm going to add in half of that ground beef because like I said, this recipe only calls for half a pound and I cooked a full pound. And then I'm gonna add in about half of a can of corn. The recipe calls for frozen peas. I don't like peas, so I did corn instead. And then we're gonna just add this into a greased pie plate. And then we're gonna go ahead and finish our mashed potatoes. Of course, you can do your mashed potatoes however you want, but I did try to follow this instruction. So I am mashing up my potatoes. Once they were done, I drained them, mashed them. I don't necessarily need my potatoes super creamy, so I use my little meat masher here. And then I added in two tablespoons of butter. You're gonna add in some salt and pepper if you like it. I don't cook with pepper because I don't like pepper. And then we're gonna add in about a tablespoon of milk or cream. I add in almond milk. And then the recipe calls for one large egg yolk. Never done that before, but I, I'm going with it because that's what the recipe said. So I'm just spooning that on top here. Now I didn't have quite enough mashed potatoes. I probably could have used one more potato um, in there, but that's okay. I made it work. We're going to just spread that along the top and get that ready for the oven. We're gonna bake that in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. I did 20 minutes and then I'm topping it with some shredded cheddar cheese, and then I just popped it back in the oven just for a few minutes to get the cheese nice and melted, and this is how it came out. This was delicious. This recipe could easily, very easily, be doubled to make a larger one, but yum, this was so good. Actually, I haven't eaten yet today when I'm doing this voiceover, and I'm getting pretty hungry. Okay, so for the next night, we had nachos, and I didn't show you me putting this all together, but I just used the other half of that ground beef that I had, um, heated that up with a little bit of water and taco seasoning just to moisten it up and give it some flavor. I also had the rest of that canned corn. 
So we put that on top along with lettuce and tomato, taco sauce, sour cream, all of the things, and it was very delicious. So this next recipe is for a million dollar spaghetti squash. I think I've shared this with you guys before. I'm trying to cut my spaghetti squash in half, and I think I told you last time I did this that it's so much easier with a good knife, but this time it wasn't easy, so I'm not sure. But there are tricks you can look up online to piercing them and throwing them in the microwave, and it makes it easier to cut, but I just like to take the hard way. So I cut it in half, scooped out my seeds, put it on a lined baking sheet that has been greased, and I put in just a little bit of water to help steam the spaghetti squash and put that in the oven at 350 for 30 minutes. You can also do 400. I think I normally do 400. I don't know why I did 350 this time. But the amount of time it's going to take is going to vary based on the size of your spaghetti squash. So now I'm cooking up one pound of ground beef, and then we are going to season with salt. Once again, pepper if you want to do that. And what else are we adding in? We're going to add in some Italian seasoning. I think the recipe that I have linked shows you like oregano, basil, and thyme, but I just did the Italian seasoning. And then some garlic powder. We're going to mix that all together until it is well combined. And then we're going to add in one jar of spaghetti sauce. I use this marinara sauce from Aldi. I almost said the Dollar Tree from Aldi. And I just put a tiny bit of water in the bottom, not a lot, just to make to shake it around and get the rest of the sauce out and we are going to combine that. This dinner is super easy, very delicious. It's kind of like a big ziti or a lasagna. It's not quite as much layering as a lasagna. Now, when your speedy squash is done, flip them over and you do need to let them cool for a little bit or you're going to burn your fingers. The recipe calls to make this right in these shells here and I've done that before but this time I wanted to just scoop it out. So I use a fork to kind of fluff up the strands or the strings and I'm putting that in a 9 by 13 baking dish that has been greased. And we're just going to put all of the spaghetti squash, clean them out really good, and put them in the bottom of the pan. And then we're going to salt that really well because you do want to salt the spaghetti squash. At least that's my opinion. And then we're going to spoon about half of the meat and sauce mixture on top and spread that out. And now I've got one container of ricotta cheese. And we're just going to disperse that the best we can over this whole thing. Kind of spreading it out, but you want to just spread out where you dollop it because, you know, you can't fully spread it out without messing everything up. And then the recipe, I think, calls for mozzarella cheese, but I actually didn't have any. So I used some white cheddar cheese here and then some freshly grated Parmesan cheese, which is why it's in a bowl and I'm using a spoon um, rather than like a shaker. And we're just putting that across the top as well. And then we're going to go ahead and add the rest of the sauce and meat mixture and then add a little bit more cheese on top. If you are enjoying this video, please give it a thumbs up because that does help me out. And also please consider subscribing. A lot of the people who watch my video are not also subscribed. Um, so I would love it if you would consider subscribing and being a part of my YouTube family. Not only does that help you know when I post future similar videos, it also does help my channel out. So. I would appreciate it if you would consider doing that. And then I did pop this back in the oven for like 20 minutes or maybe a little bit less, but I forgot to grab a shot of it before we served it. So that's how it was. So this next recipe, well, all right, let me give you a little bit of story. So I got the inspiration from this from Jessica O'Donohue. You should check out her channel. I love her. Um, she did a recipe for cheeseburger tacos. So I am going to link that video for you to check out. I took the idea and used it in two different meals. So this first night I had a lot of produce that needed to be eaten up. So we are going to have like cheeseburger salads. So I'm cooking up one pound of ground beef. My husband is in the back there um, chopping up all of the veggies. And I added in some garlic powder, onion powder, and some salt along with some Worcestershire sauce. And then I'm adding in some real bacon pieces from Aldi, but you could also easily um, uh, cook up your own bacon. If you do that, cook it up first and then cook your beef in a little bit of that grease. But I, that's not the route I ended up taking. So now I'm going to add in some cheddar cheese, and we are just going to melt that a little bit in with the beef and bacon mixture. And like I said, I'll have her video linked if you want to see exactly how she does it. But now I'm adding in some ketchup and some mustard just kind of to taste, and, and I, I don't know, I didn't have specifics here. 
um, but we're just going to combine that. I think I do add in a little bit more ketchup here in just a second. And I think we added our regular, our salads were just like lettuce, cucumber, tomato, carrots. And then I think we added in some pickles to our salad as well. And then we just added this meat mixture on top. And this was actually really, really good. There was enough juiciness in the meat mixture that we didn't have to add on any like salad dressing, but you could if you wanted. Italian dressing I think would be good on it. But we really, really enjoyed it. I'm showing it to you all mixed up so you can get a better idea. And this was really, really good. Loved this. But we only used half of the meat. So the next night, um, instead of doing the straight up tacos like she did, we did some quesadillas. So this is my husband's department, quesadillas. This is, I, I call him on duty for that. So we just have flour tortillas in the pan and he puts down some shredded cheese. Even though there was already some meat cheese in the meat mixture, we wanted that to help keep, um, help it to all like stick together. And he's just spreading that out on top. He has a method to this. He leaves it open till it's fully ready to be flipped. And then he chopped up some dill pickles and put them on top of the meat mixture. And once that was all done, he did, he put the other one on top and flipped it and he nailed it. I was like, you nailed the flip for the camera. Um, no, he was just making dinner. He did great with it. Um, now you could also serve this with a side of lettuce and tomatoes chopped up if you wanted, but we had it just like this. And they were seriously so delicious. All right, well, that's gonna do it for today's video. If you liked it, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing before you leave if you have not yet done so already. And turn on that notification bell so you don't miss out on my future videos, which do include grocery hauls and what's for dinner and other recipe-related videos. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time.